Hi, my name is Ike C and I'm a violinist with the Australian Chamber Orchestra. We're a 17-piece ensemble based in Sydney, Australia, and we travel around the country and internationally giving over 100 performances a year. Now, people often say the ACO defies traditional barriers. We're part orchestra, part chamber group, and sometimes even part rock band. I think it just means that we put all our soul and energy into everything that we do whether it's a film project, collaborations with theatre and dance companies, or working with young people through programs such as ACO Collective, the Emerging Artists Program, online lessons and string workshops. And of course, not forgetting the core of what we do, playing great music from string quartets to symphonies, Bach and Vivaldi to Fabian Schoenberg and Johnny Greenwood. Hi, my name is Ilya Isakovich. I am a violinist from the Australian Chamber Orchestra. I would like to tell you a little bit about the historical context in which the composer's eighth quartet was written. It was written in 1960 at the time of great distress for Dmitry Shostakovich. His health was deteriorating. At the same time, he was forced to join the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, which he despised. Apart from that, there always have been great amount of tension between the composer and Stalin, who was actively involved in censoring his music, as well as music of other Soviet composers, so it fits the Soviet dogma. The official title of the quartet is for the victims of fascism, but many believe that uh, the composer actually intended this quartet to be in memory of uh, victims of Stalinist repressions. Of course, he could not put the title up. Another interpretation is that the quartet is actually a sort of a requiem the composer has wrote for himself as he had suicidal thoughts during that period of time. The evidence that supports this last theory is the usage of Dmitry Shostakovich's initials as sort of musical signature, which are DSCH, and he uses those initials in every one of the five movements of the quartet. He also uses quite lots of quotes from previous pieces of music that he wrote during his lifetime. I'm Nikki Deval and I'm a violist with the Australian Chamber Orchestra. By understanding a little bit about who Shostakovich was and where this piece fits into his life, uh, we sometimes find it helpful to connect to the emotion of the piece by having specific images in our heads that describe the music as we're performing it. This can help us to stay absorbed in the music and hopefully communicate some of the composer's intent to our audience. When the Borodin Quartet played this piece for the composer in his home in Moscow, they report that by the end of the piece, the composer had his head in his hands and was weeping. The musicians weren't sure what to do, so they packed up quietly and left, and the composer just remained in that state. The first movement is filled with such melancholy and this image of the composer completely absorbed in his sadness as he hears his musical signature repeated over and over again keeps me connected to that emotion. At the end of the first movement a huge crescendo propels us into the frenetic energy 
of the second movement. I like to imagine that the composer is describing that day in the Second World War when US and English bombers descended on Dresden and destroyed that beautiful city. It's easy in the viola and cello parts to hear anti-aircraft fire and in the rapid and frenetic lines of the violins and other instruments later on, maybe machine gun fire. music races along at a crazy pace. The viola and later the violin play really frenetic lines up high on their lowest string, which creates a sound that's tense and strained. At this point, I imagine people are running everywhere with terror and fear. Shostakovich quotes a well-known Jewish folk tune at a point in the movement where the violins are really high, screaming it out and the viola and cello are making a barrelage of noise underneath. I imagine the composer is trying to describe the Jewish victims of Nazi fascism and all that they went through. Hi, my name is Timo Vekovalo and I'm the principal cello of the ACO. When performing a string quartet as a string orchestra, one might lose some of the intimacy of the original work. But you can also gain so many new colours that aren't necessarily achievable with just four players. The obvious addition to the sound is the double bass. Usually in these sort of arrangements, the double bass has a somewhat simplified cello part, or in some passages it might be enhancing the viola part. Let's say, for example, if the cello at that particular moment has a melodic line or a very high passage that's not so playable on the double bass. It's important to understand how this added part functions together with the original four parts of the string quartet and how it enhances the music. When performing the Shostakovich's eighth string quartet, we're in the fortunate position to have an existing arrangement by one of the founding members of the Boarding Quartet, Rudolf Barshai. 